Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. So I've finally done it, finally got around to building my Forge World Chaos Warhound Titan. And in this video I'm going to take you through what I did, uh, give you some tips and tricks and show you the finished uh, article or nearly finished article because in this video I just do the build and the next video is going to be turning it more into Nurgle than it already is and doing some bits of conversion and obviously painting it up. So, you know, subscribe and all that jazz if you want to see that part. Now, during this build, my biggest friend was green stuff. So when you build the parts, a lot of them don't fit necessarily correctly. Um, and even at the very beginning here, where we're just putting toe pieces into uh, slots, I've trimmed down the edges because they're slightly too long, the pins that go in, you've got to cut them to size. Now I've sort of cut them slightly more than you need to, used a bit of green stuff into the hole, super glue on either end, forced it in. And that also then gels the piece together, fills in the gaps and cracks in those piece, in, in the feet pieces. So all of the builds you see me using a lot of green stuff and I'll talk later on about how to use it and sort of why. Now when you're doing the feet you really got to consider what you want the eventual model to look like because you can have this sort of all jaunty angles with the feet and whatever. Now I wanted a fairly basic stance so I'm building both these feet perfectly flat. Now that has advantages in that when you put the top of the model on it separates and, and forces the weight down through the toes. Obviously, if you have it stood up on its toes, up on a point, or one leg in a particularly strange angle, you will need to do a lot of pinning and drilling and all that kind of thing. Now, I didn't want to do this on this build, and I have built two Warhound Titans prior to this. Um, and I do know, you know, if you're going to put it at any weird jaunty angles or the feet are going to be raised, you really do need to use some brass rods and that kind of pinning trick. But doing what I'm doing this way, keeping the feet fairly flat or completely flat, um, you don't need to do that. And it spreads the weight relatively evenly. And I say I've built a couple before. So the first one I built, I actually built um, at Games Workshop Bed Office on typically my lunch breaks actually when I was working down there for a month or so and had some of the Forge World guys give me some hints and tips and whatever and show me what to do and literally even they said at the time uh, whether they've changed their stance but at the time if you build with the feet flat and you build in a certain pose you don't need to go into the world of pinning and all this that and the other but you do do what, what I do here which is a lot of green stuff work a lot of thinking carefully about the pose now I am going to do another um Warhound Titan for my Nurgle army and I'm going to go buy that at some point in the future and I'll do that on a, a trip down to head office and uh, go watch the Warhammer world um, and that one I'm going to do in a jaunty pose so that will be a slightly different build but here I'm going for a fairly static build with the feet and I'm going to do the pose so that in theory it can all be freestanding without any pinning and, and whatever although I do do a little bit later on so now before I do the legs I'm just showing you something about how blue tack is your friend so blue tack a brilliant thing to use when you're building bigger models like this because unlike plastic models that really you know if you don't quite get the angle correct you can just kind of bend it and fudge it whatever you really do need your angles and your positioning on the legs on this build correct because that's going to determine um, how the weight's going to distribute through the model so i literally use some blue tack i put the legs together I either messed about angle with the pose um, used the center piece of the body which you'll see later until i was happy that i'd positioned it correctly now what i'm doing here is just taking some nice bright paint uh, and then painting on the join areas where the three individual pieces of these legs meet so that when i start assembling it i know i'm assembling it in the right angle and i don't have to worry about repositioning it when i've got glue and things on there so i've done the same technique you've seen with the feet so i've super glue on both parts uh green stuff onto the into the, the cavity and the joints and then stuck it together and then just the green stuff that's forced out of the joints that's here pushing it back in and making sure there's no gaps and cracks that aren't filled and this will give a really really strong bond um, between all these different panels now the thing you have to do though is give the models drying time because obviously green stuff will set rock solid give you a really really strong bond uh, and to be honest that you know when you test fit some of these and i did test the legs to make sure i was comfortable with it and everything and um, you won't be able to break it well you will obviously but unfortunately it is only a model soldier after all but um, that does not work if you start messing with it and you rush too far ahead in the build process because obviously until this stuff sets it's fairly malleable and you can move it and those kind of things so um give yourself plenty of time you know don't rush to do this whole build in a day now it only took me about five and a half hours of actual building time because i, I filmed every single part of it you know and i've got all the raw footage um but i did that over six evenings so about an hour or so a night um, taking it in little stages and giving plenty of drying time between and you can see what i mean by the process here so i'm putting the ball joint onto the leg that's going to go into the kind of bottom of the torso big blob of green stuff in the joint and then i've made a sausage of green stuff 
spread that around the bottom of it. Now, the reason I know where to put that sausage of green stuff is, I test fitted this ball joint onto the leg multiple times, saw where the gaps were, saw what was going on, and realized that because of how it's molded, there was a bit of a gap at the bottom section. So I made a little sausage of green stuff, forced it in, and you can see that there's actually now no gaps left. So it's, it's that kind of testing and take your time to look at the pieces before they go together. And again, in some ways, that's why blue tack is your friend, because if you're messing with that ball joint, you can pop some blue tack in there, push it together, take it apart, make sure it contacted all the areas and use an equivalent size of green stuff to go in to really seal it. So, you know, keep messing. Um, blue tack's your friend for the testing part, and then it's green stuff and super glue. Similar thing with the pistons. Now, I didn't show you the pistons on the feet because it's the same process. Now, these um, partly cosmetic, but actually partly help you to solidify, especially on the ball joint here, because the piston crosses over where the two pieces are. So really, test that it fits, file it down, make sure you're comfortable with it, you know, score both sections, and then drop that piston in, glue it on, um, and then again, green stuff around the gaps, which you'll see in a bit. So, and, and you can use them to just strengthen those joints. Now this is the same build session that I did the legs. So while the legs are drying, move on to another piece. Now the officially, you don't build the guns until I think step four or something in the Titan build. But I've got all the pieces in little bags and little boxes um, around so that if I've got time left in my building session, I can move on to something else later on. You know, make use of your time. Sometimes a temptation, if you're following that exact guide and you're thinking, well, I'm gonna do some building tonight for two hours, you will do two hours of building on step one or step two which will mean you're rushing ahead with the piece and that's where things will go wrong because you've not given sufficient drying time. So that's the other big piece of advice I would do. Take your time over it or really try and structure your time. Make sure you can do something else while you're giving those pieces that proper drying time. The guns are really easy to put together. It's just some little plasma pods into the guns, but I followed the same steps uh, as we've done with other pieces. Now I found actually on the plasma blast gun, the rear end of it, um, where the kind of cables and things go in, was really badly molded and um, really didn't like it. Now I'm nurgling it, so the molding and stuff doesn't really matter too much, but I didn't want it completely uh, badly done. So again, green stuff is your friend. I've just smoothed out about a millimeter of green stuff across the back of the plasma gun piece. to try and make it as flat as possible um, without worrying too much again, because it is gonna get nurgled. And then use that as the base of where the um, cables and the ports and things are gonna go. So you will find that with Forge World models, that there's going to be areas that won't be, you know, 100% correct. Some of it will be covered by panels, and you see here when these panels and connectors go on, actually, most of that bad molding would have been covered, but 100% happy with it. So, just worth doing while you're going. And again, still in the same build session, um, building the Titan head. Now, I was test fitting it again wasn't quite happy with how the cheek of the, the, the head plate was and just kind of tried to bend it into place and managed to snap it. Um, that will happen if you force it. Now, later on, I'm gonna show you how to properly um, shape a, a Forge World panel, uh, but I made the mistake. We can recover it, no, no biggie. Same process, bit of green stuff, um, little sausages onto the areas where these contact areas are or aren't. Um, super glue and then we'll glue that down and then glue the cheek piece on and I'll show you over the course of the video how we're going to recover uh, the damage we did. Now actually the damage will still be showing at the end of this video but it's the next video when I'm going to nurgle it that's going to really cover that kind of damage off. So you can see the line down the front of the nose where that crack is. You can also see on this panel lots of gaps um, where it sits onto the head. Now those gaps are there because you're meant to do this where you can take the face plate off. Now I don't want to paint the interior, you can do, it's not, I don't want to do it, I've done it before, so I've done two times before, did it on one, didn't do it on the other, um, it's a bit of a novelty, uh, that's fine, but not something I wanted to do. So now we're on the following uh, evening's build, the legs have completely dried, I've been again playing and test fitting, making sure I'm comfortable as to where the pose is going to go, similar thing, scored all the contact areas with a knife, just scratched it up, um, super glue into the base of the feet, then a, like a green stuff plug, and then whack the feet in. Make sure you use the middle of the torso so you can get it balanced, you can get the legs at the angle you want, and then glue it in. And you can see there, I've turned them upside down and I've put them onto like a padded area to dry. Again, this is another evening. So the guns you saw before, I, I glued the plugs in onto the guns, let that dry overnight, and now I'm doing an extra patch of green stuff into these areas. And then taking the head that again, the previous night I'd worked on, 
and taking the excess green stuff I've got and just working on making sure these guns are sealed in, making sure the head unit, all the gaps have been taken. You're going to see me coming back to the head again and again and again. Right, so these legs, again, they've had real good thorough time to dry. There is a green stuff plug in the bottom of the ball and socket joint, but I'm just using some extra green stuff and putting it into all the gaps around that joint. Now, this has been thoroughly dried. If you were to do this step, you know, half an hour after you'd stuck the legs together, you would end up moving the feet and the legs and it wouldn't work and you'd end up knocking it off kilter. So again, drying time, that's the biggest piece of, of work I can, or biggest hint I can give you when you're building these models, take your time. Now the leg pins, these are much more awkward to do than the pistons and pins on most of the other parts. So I messed up a couple on the uh, first leg by cutting them too short. So like my tip for this would be, do the long ones first you have to test fit them so there's a ball socket or ball ball part of the socket um, at top and bottom and you have to put these two part pistons together um, into the top and bottom and obviously they go in and out and you have to cut them to length and, and this that the other because they don't slide all the way into the uh, piston so do the long ones first because if you cut off too much you can then use that for a short one and work your way around the leg fairly simple to do though once you've got that um, and look quite nice if you do mess any up um, the other thing i would do use them at the front of the leg if you if you can because then you're going to cover that with an armor panel and as long as the top and the bottom of these pistons look okay you'll get away with it so um they're not too tricky and i think that this is the daunting part of building the titan or the daunting part especially when you get the pieces of the titan because most of it is fairly big blocky pieces but the pistons, you get hundreds and hundreds of little, not hundreds, but quite a lot of little pieces. That that's the part that can make you go, whew, this is a bit intimidating. It's not that bad. As long as you clean them up nicely and just take your time. Now, this is what I mean about the big armour panels. So the big armour panels on these legs are dead easy to glue on. Real nice joints um, and actually pressure fitting onto the top panels worked really well. Okay, same process on the lower part of the torso here. Both sides of the ball and socket have been scored and roughed up super glue in both sides and then a plug of green stuff to really seal it together now when i've done it i've made sure that the stance is correct that i want made sure that i've got parallel pieces and then forced that together there were quite a lot of pressure actually um, between my hands just to really set it and then i've put it onto one side onto the base it's going to go on made sure the stance is right and it fits now i have got the two legs back and front of each other which means it's going to limit the pose you're going to be able to put the top half on but you'll see later I turn that pose to the point that then the weight all goes and gets distributed between the hips and to the feet without really any backwards or forwards leaning and you'll, you'll see that later. So again, with that green stuff I talked about, back to the head of the Titan. So the head, obviously I'm filling in all the gaps that you would normally leave because you want to remove it, but I didn't do it all in one session, I just did it with all the excess bits of green stuff at the end of every building session. So you don't have to complete the stages, especially the later ones, you can come back to it. Now I'm just dropping some footage in here really of me test fitting those pieces um, because this is something you want to do every single time before you throw glue on and before you start putting the green stuff on or whatever just test fit you know test fit the pieces make sure you're comfortable where it's going make sure you understand where the contact points are because then you can you know waste less glue and uh, waste less cleaning up um, and just you know more playing means it's going to go the other better Again, before I've even glued, I've just double checked that all the pieces that are going to go on afterwards are, are there and correct. Again, back to the trusty super glue and green stuff. Um, I'm going to get a bit repetitive this build. I'm going to say the same thing time and time again, but it's just showing you where we're going. Um, it really is amazing the amount of glue and green stuff you will go through in one of these builds if you're doing it thoroughly. So before you start the build, make sure you've got a spare pot of super glue. Make sure you've ordered yourself some green stuff. And I will link the green stuff I use down below so you can order that off Amazon if you want. But as ever, use your local hobby stores if you've got one because they're the ones that keep the hobby community alive in your area it's always better to do but if you want to you know um, use an amazon link there is some down below now again take your time i've done the same thing i've put the green stuff sausage around i've forced it in uh, and this is why you need to test fit the pieces because if anything comes out into an area that you're going to glue on later you need to make sure you remove that and then before i've let this set so again the green stuff takes a long while to set and a long while to dry i'm just test fitting the next couple of pieces that go on to make sure that i've positioned this one correctly because what you don't want to do is let it dry and set and then have a nightmare trying to take it apart and um, if you've looked at the channel I did do a very short 15 second video a few days ago of doing little um, speed build you kind of call it so every part of this I kind of put it onto the eventual base a bit of blue tack or whatever and videoed it and uh, had it circling and you'll, you'll check that out if you fancy it and 
you see the sort of stages and you'll see each bit I videoed was like a different night or a different uh, sessions. So you'll see how many sessions I broke this kind of up into. So the legs have been allowed to dry overnight now. Again, this is another session. Um, and now again, back to that all time favorite, the green stuff. Now it's easier to fill the gaps. You've seen it every step here by making a little sausage laying it across the crack and then forcing it in and I use a mix of silicon tools and metal tools metal tool, tools tend to be my favorite because I've used them for years although I'm quite enjoying the silicon tools I bought recently um, just a little bit different um, but really the more time you can spend on green stuff in the better you can get it the stronger all the bonds will be and also the gaps and cracks will be less back to these piston rings and things you've seen it before these are very similar to the leg ones um, they are different though so when you're preparing the model the pistons that go on the kind of lower um, shin area are different to the ones that go at the, the waist area. So but the same principle, same principle applies, test fit them, cut them to size. There isn't one you can really kind of hide if it goes wrong on this one. So this is the, the one to be careful on. And thankfully I'm glad to report I didn't mess up any of the pistons, so I didn't really have to hide any. They're not structural. Um, and I did find actually on a couple of them, there were the ball joints that weren't quite right and I ended up snapping one off when, when I was doing it. But you can repair that again just to ball the green stuff onto it uh, and glue it down because they're not super structural. So carry on the build in the same fashion. And this is essentially the legs complete with this kind of groin armour, I suppose you'd call it. Set it to one side to go. Uh, and you can see now, this is where I've jumped out of step slightly. And again, some of these builds I have because I've, I've prepared the waist section. Um, that was the, the start of the main hull before I've finished the legs. Because again, I want to leave each part to dry properly. Now, if I moved it in exact steps and I was to do the legs and then move on to this section, and I rushed and put this whole thing together, there's chances it would slip and move. So I suppose always think of that. You don't want really to be putting too much weight onto any section of the build at any one time. The load bearing areas on this, the torso, is that kind of two cockpit parts you've seen I put together initially. And if it's gonna take the weight, you really need to let that you know really thoroughly dry so you can see here there was lots of test fitting there i just dropped that in at super speed so you can show actually i do more time on test fitting the pieces than i do of actually kind of sticking them together so that when you do stick them together you know where they're going and we're all good and you can see again these little gun servitor ports um, really really nice uh, just making sure they're fitted in place same principles the green stuff etc etc and then before it dries again test fitting the top panel now the top panel i am going to glue it down um, i would understand you know people want to leave it open um, and they want to be able to see the interior um I, I, I get it I, I really do understand why people would it's an expensive really cool model um i'm not bothered you know in a game i'm not going to be taking the top top carapace off to look at how it goes together and everything um so for me i'm just gluing it together now the advantage of gluing it together is that when you fill in the gaps on the inside you don't have to be super tidy um, and you can just whack a bit more green stuff on and it will speed the process up if you were doing the green stuffing inside um you know and you were going to show it you need to be a little bit tidier than i'm being and i left the internal door off that you meant to put on as well uh, and that'll be an extra step you do it'd be like a 30 second step so it's not like it save me any time particularly um so you know it'd be perfectly possible for me to have done the interior of this i just don't want to i didn't want to in this time main reason for me being um, that when I see them with the top carapace removable, the top carapace never really fits right when you put it into the removable state. So for me, I wanted it gluing down because then it makes the model, I think, look a bit cleaner. Not I mean, it's Nurgle, so it's never gonna look particularly clean, but it, you know what I mean, I hope I'm making sense there without the big gaps and the armor sort of holes that you will see when the carapace is removable. So that's what I wanted to do on this build. I may do the next build with the carapace off if fancy takes me, um, but there we go, it's just my process. So you'll see here at super speed, I always leave this in really, partly so I could just ramble a little bit, but also as you can see really how much there is to sort of go around and gap fill. And this really is the important part. Every single gap and crack and seam line that isn't perfect, or even if it is nearly perfect, get the green stuff in there, um, get the gaps filled. One, it looks nicer two it gives much more strength to the model if you don't do the green stuff in stage this is where you hear reports of people that you know they that their time falls to pieces later on you know so really it's worth the time and effort to do green stuff in and it isn't scary you know um yeah it's not particularly nice compound it's slightly toxic but i think i said before i use something called um, liquid gloves 
that you just put on. It's like putting hand cream on. Well, it is hand cream. Um, it's like putting moisturiser on or whatever. But what it does is it protects your skin from the chemicals and things uh, that are on there. doesn't stop glue and um, stuff sticking to your skin, so you don't have to clean it off after. It's a lot easier than making and building in gloves, though. Okay, so now we're talking about top carapace. And I mentioned before how the carapace doesn't touch. And I also mentioned before how I broke the carapace on the head. So this is how to not do that. So this is freshly boiled water. So this is boiling water in here. And I'm dropping the two wings of the carapace, I suppose you would call it, uh, into that water for 30 seconds or so, as you've seen there. Then that makes it super flexible. So then I'm bending it uh, onto and molding around the hull um, of the torso so that then actually all the points will contact. Simple step, makes the model look an awful lot better. And that's how to kind of make sure that, you know, the resin in 40 wheel kits is actually straight. So be very careful as you do it, because obviously it's boiling water, you know, don't go scalding yourself or anything, but um, it's not too hard to do. So I've glued the top um, carapace down and in the same fashion. And now I'm gluing the little accessory pieces down with the hatches and things and just getting the void shields stuck on. And that's all the detailing really and all the parts now stuck onto the body um, or the carapace we're gonna call it of the Titan. Green stuff is your friend again. I'm gonna talk about green stuff more times in this video than I've ever talked about green stuff in my life. But again, going around the vents and things at the back um, and just again, sealing all the joints. Now I could get away with doing less green stuff in than I did on this build if I'd have left the carapace off and if I decided, you know, um, to leave some a few more of the mold lines, because it's Nurgle, that's how it goes, but I wanted it to be a real solidly built model. Gluing the head on, uh, you could magnetise, and I actually did buy a load of magnets to magnetise the head on, then I thought, I can't be bothered, <laughs> essentially. I want it in one pose, um, and the pose I want this in, really, I, I can't really afford to have it magnetised, because if you do, it throws off the weight balance, and I wanted it particularly balanced. So I wanted the head, it's going to have slightly turning left, and that gave me the opportunity to run that green stuff over um, the socket part of this head, which then gives it, again, extra structural strength uh, when you're sticking it together. Now, I am sealing the guns in, like I said before, did buy some magnets, but I want to seal the guns in to the build. So scored both the socket joints up again. It's a similar process. Super glue onto both sides. Put that green stuff over the uh, super glued ball part and then into the socket we go. And it will kind of seal this in. Now, um, when I've done it, I've tested the pose that I want it on, on. So I've put this body onto the legs, tested it, tested the angle of the guns. I want the guns kind of following the head um, position so it looks like he's you know focusing his fire on the enemy and then push these in, and there's some little supports underneath the guns there, uh, just bits of foam, to keep them at the right position while they set overnight. Um, and the, the base of the model is actually sat on the table, so that there's, it's all structurally supported, it's gonna set really solidly uh, into position. So, you know, you can very, not easily, but relatively easily, magnetize your guns, um, just magnets on the other side, glue them into the socket holes, and it gives you the flexibility, I suppose, of being able to take the weapons out, store them, put different weapons on. But I wanted to go for the weapons being stuck down because I'm, I'm conscious of, I want them in the same position because it's the weight distribution. Now I talked earlier about how I'm not pinning this model, I'm doing a couple of pins because even though I know these guns are gonna be secure, there's a little bit of paranoia that says, this is the part of the build that I suppose structurally is gonna get knocked and knocked about. So what I'm doing is when this is set, again, this is not while the green stuff is wet, this is when it's fully dried, just taking a little fake Dremel there, drilling through the side part of the carapace into that ball joint, and then just putting some pinning stuff into there. And I did um, four pins into each gun socket. Probably paranoia, I probably didn't need to be. Again, the last time I built a, a Titan, a Warhound Titan, which was an Imperial one, wasn't a Chaos one, um, I didn't do that part. Um, and that Titan, I don't own it anymore, I sold it off to a friend. Um, it's still in existence and it's still in one piece, and I built that 15 years ago. So. You don't need to do it, a little bit of paranoia, but I suppose paranoia is not necessarily a bad thing. Now the one part I am magnetizing is the waist. Now this will self-balance because I've finished the torso, I've put the little panels on the gun you see there. It will self-balance, but I just want a little bit of extra security in case it gets knocked. It's not super stable, as in, you know, you can't knock this thing and the top won't come off, because they clearly will, because these are big models, but this just gives that little bit of extra support drilling into the top of the legs, putting two small magnets in. And the reason I'm doing the small magnets, that kind of helps it align a bit. And then a big magnet at the part of the torso where the small magnets are, and it almost guides you then to magnetizing it in the right place. Because I need this torso 
turning and facing over to the right. And there's the finished build. So hopefully that uh, made some sort of sense, my process, my method. Check an eye on the channel, uh, subscribe, all that kind of YouTube jazz. And then next week will be the final nurgling of the model. So I hope my process there made sense. Hope I didn't talk about green stuff too much. And uh, I'll see you in another video.